Hey guys, welcome to a little podcast for a little evening. Um, I've just finished actually a big old practice on my electric cello and I did notice that the electric cello and the acoustic cello are, there, there are differences. So the, the distances and things like that are the same. So it's set up, it's a Yamaha, so it's standard set up. Um, the spacings are all the same, etc. But there are, I mean, I made the bridge myself. I, I probably need to get a professionally made bridge, um, which I will do very, very shortly, actually. I don't want to keep using this bridge too long. But I did notice there's some very tiny differences that um, I was, you know, keen to point out because they're quite interesting. So on the on the electric cello, uh, it requires me to play lower down on the string sounds better and also um, stops me hitting the other string. So just the way it's set up, the tweaking, if I play too high, um, the, the strings, especially, well, the two middle strings particularly are so tight, it's, it's very easy for me to hit the other string. So that's the first thing that I noticed. Um, it, it's also um, a much harder to get a responsive, a, a beautiful resonance, responsive, resonant, responsive sound. Well, it would be. It's an electric cello. It's a silent cello. So it's got, it's not going, you know, it's not got a body to reverberate around. Um, but that makes, I think that in a way, it makes you more careful about being trying to make a, a a nice sound, so it's very unforgiving. Do you see what I mean? Whereas the um the acoustic, or, although today I wasn't, you know, because I've got a new bow and I've got a new string, so it was a, a feeling a little bit strange today. The acoustic, but I got quite used to it eventually. I mean, you you do get used to things very very quickly if, if you're practicing a lot. You can't help it. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of wondering about if it's okay to play two instruments. But I do know people who do play two instruments and they manage it fine. So you just have to sort of tune yourself in um, to the idiosyncrasies of your instrument. And you, what you find is you just get good at each one, kind of separately, and they have their nuances and you work with them. Do you see what I mean? And it'll happen automatically. It just does. I mean, everything in life is takes a bit of work and a bit of practice. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting. So I'm not sure that I'll be able to play it. I did notice I, I'd practised it a while back standing up. I quite like this idea of standing up, especially for teaching. It's quite a good, um, quite a good way of doing it. Um, I have got a, a strap which... Um, is it Mike Block? I think it's Mike Block. I think that's his name. Uh, invented and it's a sort of ch cello strap, and you can have it strapped to your body. I didn't much like it, but I might try it again. Actually, and it certainly doesn't work with the electric cello. The electric cello was just totally the wrong shape. Very very uncomfortable um, with the strap. But I, I mean, I could make, I could fashion my own strap easily enough. Um, which would be easier than um, the the thing with the sound being better towards the bridge means I ha and I'm not particularly tall. It means I have to get my arm lower down to get the note, and it doesn't matter how high the pin is. Do you see what I mean? So that's kind of difficult. I mean, the pin was on the full amount, the fullest extension. Um, and I, I still was struggling to reach it. So, you know, that might be better with some sort of strapping. Um, so I'll play around. You can get, if you know, the type of straps you get for old cameras and stuff like that. Um, but I'm sure I could fashion something out of a, a, an old scarf or, you know, whatever. You just need to mount it on yourself. The thing with the electric cello is it's, it's so uncomfortable and it digs in. Um, so you you need um, padding as well. Like sometimes I've used a cushion actually, just to be a bit more comfortable while I've been practicing it. So yeah, I thought I'd point point all that out to you guys. Um, so the the new show over at on Vimeo. It, we've also got a 
channel where you can access everything, um, which is Mobile TV 360. We've just um, established that. That used to be Telltale Club website, so you may be familiar with it. Um, and I've streamed, trimmed it right back, streamed it down, and it's just got hasn't got too many pages. There's nothing too complicated on there. It just says what we do on the tin, you know. But it does allow you to access the different sort of things that I do, or not not the different things so much as the different profiles. So I've got my Saatchi profile, which is for fine art. So you can find that there, and you can go directly to the link, and you can have a look at the artwork. Um, the artwork is all for the Telltale Club books and the Telltale Club albums and um, singles. So it's all related, you see. Um, also, we've got a couple of blog sites which are really focusing on the podcasts. So you can go to those and, and have a listen to the podcast. But they're on the website too. So you can... All, all things come back to the website, the um, mobile TV 361. And... You know, you can't. It's really hard to get lost. Do you know what I mean? I've made it really, really simple. Um, but do let me know if you think there's a problem with it. I mean, I'm open to a bit of criticism. Um, and what else have I got? YouTube. So Tale Teller Club is on YouTube. Um, again, I'm trying to kind of stream everything down, and um, kind of every make everything Tale Teller Club, so that it it's just a bit easier, you know a bit easier to find your way around. And, and I think that's the best way of doing things. And people, you know, I've got a lot of names going flying around and it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's um, a little bit helpful, guys. Everything is available to subscribers, but there's loads and loads of free stuff as well. So all the music therapy is free. It's also available on the subscription channel if you don't want ads. So if you go to my YouTube, you are going to get really annoying adverts. But some people don't mind. Lots of people don't mind that. Um, it's entirely, you know, a personal choice. So um, also, if you subscribe to the YouTube music, you'll get all the music ad free anyway. Um, I don't I don't really know anyone who does that. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Just a bit of a heads up for today. I'm going to go and do some um a bit more musicy work, and uh, I'm really look for, looking forward to tomorrow. So first thing we do piano, and then we do cello, and we'll be doing the cooking and um, fitness stuff at a later date, once a month. I'm going to do one a monthly production, but quite a big production um, for those, as they're so time consuming and getting in the way of music. And I'm I'm all about the music and the art at the moment, nothing else. Don't I'm not interested in anything else for the time being. Um okay guys, um story coming up. I think it's um oh, I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> I'm just about to put it up. It's an hour long reading. I think it's a Sherlock Holmes. I think it's a dramatized Sherlock Holmes. And I think you'll love it. And uh you can have a listen to that at bedtime and it'll probably fall asleep before it finishes but it's about an hour long which I thought was just perfect really and then um you know just press play on your um wh well whatever you're using so we're on Apple we're on Spreaker we're on um Amazon I mean we're everywhere absolutely everywhere so no no worry about that so just press play and and you know if you fall asleep so be it or it'll just play more of my stuff, I guess. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Lots of love, and I'll be back tomorrow.